So the first question is, our lab is new to working with steroids. What are some options for steroid formation? Now to answer this question, I am assuming we are talking about steroids here as opposed to organoids. And the way we like to differentiate between the two is that steroids are a mass of cells, typically only one or two cell types and there's no polarity to this structure. Whereas with organoids, um, they do require the presence of stem cells. You end up with multiple lineages of your cells. The cells also form a polarized structure. For example, there's often the presence of a hollow lumen within that structure. So specifically for forming steroids, I am going to highlight some scaffold-free options. So many of you might be familiar with um, matrices, such as Corning Nature Gel or with collagen substrates. But to keep things simple, since we're just forming steroids here, again, not organoids, I'm going to highlight scaffold-free options. So the first is to use some type of low attachment surface that prevents cells from attaching to your plate or to your vessel. And so here you could use Corning's ultra-low attachment surface, whether that's in a flask or that's in a dish. And this is going to produce multiple steroids of varying sizes. So if that's all you're looking for, you could use a ULA surface. You also could use spinner flasks to produce this. However, if you'd like to assay steroids and assay a single steroid per well and have all those steroids be of the same size, we would recommend using one of our steroid microplates, which are either a 96, 384, or 1536 well format. Finally, if you need to produce many steroids but make sure they're of the same size, we would suggest using the new Corning Alplasia 24 well or 6 well multi-well plates. The Corning Alplasia microplates could also be used to generate multiple steroids per well in order to increase assay response signal or cell number if that is what your assay requires. 